Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Smarter by the Second by Abacus. Um, today is the 8th of June. Throughout history, this has been quite the eventful day. On this day in 1042, Edward the Confessor became King of England. On the same day in 1861, Tennessee uh, seceded from the Union. And still on the same day in 1948, George Orwell's 1984 was published. Uh, the eventfulness on this day is also to be found in Abacus as two members were born this very day in the exact same year. So the question for you guys at home is which two Abacus members celebrate their birthday today and were born in the same year? Uh, you can answer this question clicking the link in the chat. And now we can introduce our contender for tonight. It's uh, Niels. Hi. Good evening, Niels. How are you? Good evening. I'm uh, fine, actually. So uh, could you uh, shortly introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, I'm Niels. I'm the candidate chairman and officer of educational affairs uh, for the board from next year. And uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to taking over the role that Dan now has. <laughs> well, you're not taking over this role of me, so. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so uh, we started today later because uh, you still had some candidate board things going on. So uh, yeah, yeah, how do you feel about being a candidate board right now? What's it like? Uh, well, uh, I think the uh, an advantage is that uh, I get to interact a lot with uh, people from other associations, which uh, I enjoy more than I anticipated in prior. <laughs> Good to hear. All right. So, and uh, what other things uh, have you done within Abacus uh, besides now being on the candidate board? Um, uh, I've been a member since 2018, and then. Last year, I tried uh, to organize a symposium, but we canceled it because of the coronavirus. Uh, so this year, I tried again. <laughs> and now we uh, made it online, and it was last Friday, and I hope everyone enjoyed. And uh, But besides that, it's mainly been going to activities. <laughs> <laughs> well, I sure did uh, enjoy the symposium. And uh, today, you're going to uh, contend for the category uh, geography. How come uh, you've chosen this uh, category? Uh, well, you mentioned that I said in my uh, Instagram takeover that I like maps, which is uh, absolutely true. I could stare for hours uh, at those. Uh, I mean, I'm generally quite interested in, uh, you know, ge ge geographical trivia. Right, and we already have uh, one other member of the candidate board participating, as uh, Thomas. So. Uh, do you think you can compete with his score uh, of uh, getting all first three rounds correct? Or not completely correct, but passing them? No, I don't think I can beat Thomas. Ooh. All right, so then we're uh, going into what we're going to do today. So today uh, we will do at most four rounds. And each round, we will have nine answers on screen. Then I will ask a question or show a photo, and you have to tell me the corresponding answer. In the first round, you need five of the nine answers to be correct. Then in the second round, six. In the third, seven. And if you're playing for a fourth round, you even need all nine uh, answers to be correct. During the round, your time will be ticking and you start off with 300 seconds. Uh, to help you, you will have three lifelines. Once used per lifeline, uh, one false answer will be counted as right. Uh, a lifeline will also cost you 16 seconds. But you can get another lifeline if you have a round completely correct. And if you have survived the first three rounds, then you will receive the amazing prize of one abacus cookie. And if you're feeling confident and have enough time and lifetimes left, uh, lifelines left, you can uh, choose to play the fourth round. As mentioned before, all nine answers need to be correct. And But if you succeed in this, you get two abacus cookies instead of one. But if you fail, you only get the participation trophy, which is a small apple pie. So uh, we can go right into the first round. Okay. So here you need five correct answers. Uh, it is always said that the Great Wall of China is the only man-made thing that can be seen from space. This is not true at all, however. The amount of light produced by our cities is clearly visible from outer space at nighttime. Perhaps it is even possible to recognize them from above. In this round, however, you will be able to recognize them from the side. Uh, we will have nine skylines. So we, you will see a picture on the screen of a skyline. And then you have to choose one of the following nine cities. And the options that you can choose from are Tokyo, 
Berlin, Paris, Hong Kong, Amsterdam, Washington, New York, Madrid, and Vienna. So on those maps that you are watching, is also the skylines of those maps showing? Uh, not really. <laughs> Mainly not capitals really. and those ah. kind of things. But is there a description or just a picture? Uh, you will only see a picture of the silhouette of a skyline. Only the silhouette? Okay, fine. <laughs> I'm ready. So, uh, I won't say a thing during this round, so uh, good luck. London. London is not on the list. It's not an option. <laughs> uh, uh, boss. Berlin. This is part uh, of uh, Washington. This is Berlin. <laughs> uh, New York. Paris. Boss. Uh, Vienna. And then you still have some leftovers. Okay, so in order. Uh, Amsterdam, Madrid, Hong Kong, Tokyo. <laughs> and then stop the time, uh, or not? The time yeah. I think All I'm right. going to need a lifeline. <laughs> Yeah, so you need five correct answers, then you will move on to the second round. So you have three lifelines as of now, and uh, still 225 seconds left. I need one lifeline. <laughs> right, then uh, 16 seconds will be taken of the, your time and one lifeline, and then we can move on to checking the answers. So in the first one, you... Uh, Get this one, I believe. It's uh, the, the only city actually in the Netherlands. It's uh, Amsterdam. So uh, when in the <laughs> end you uh, you <laughs> got it right. <laughs> and then from Amsterdam we go all the way to uh, Tokyo. You could be thrown off by the kind of uh, Eiffel Tower looking uh, statue, but it's uh, no. I was not... thrown off by the television tower, which looks like the one from Berlin. Uh, and then this is uh, Madrid. The previous answer was counted as right, uh, by the way, uh, by using your lifeline. Yeah. And here on the right, uh, you can see the White House. So this is Washington. Then this is Berlin. So uh, corrected by you and correctly. Then, of course, the Statue of Liberty shows here. So it's New York. Then this is the Eiffel Tower. So it's Paris. Then this is Hong Kong. And the last one was Vienna. So uh, six right uh, answers. So another sweat. Uh, and we're going into the second round. Wait, was it seven with the lifeline? Yeah. Oh, seven. Yeah, you got uh, six right by yourself and then seven using the, the lifeline. No problem. All right, the second round. Uh, the Sagrada Familia in Barcelona, Catalonia. Also known as Basilica de la Sagrada Familia, is the largest unfinished Roman Catholic minor basilica in the Example district. Designed by architect and artist Antoni Gaudi, its construction continued well after the death of its creator in 1926, even though it was briefly interrupted by the Spanish Civil War in 1936. On the subject of the extremely long construction period, Gaudi is said to have remarked, my client is not in a hurry. Unfortunately, this also meant that the basilica was only 15 till 25% complete when he died. In this round nine, completed, but sometimes constantly under renovation, cathedrals and the cities they are situated in. Uh, we will show a photo and I will tell you a description that also tells you the year of construction of the uh, cathedral. And then you have to tell me the city that this cathedral is in. Okay. So the cities that you can choose from are Cologne, New York, Moscow, Paris, Prague, 
Vienna, London is now on the list, Milan and Berlin. So you will see the cathedral and I will tell you a description about it. Oh, All right. Okay. All then right. We can start alone, around. right? <laughs> hmm? I think you mean Cologne, right? Not Cologne. <laughs> yeah, Cologne. <laughs> I'm used to say Cologne. Cool. Okay. All right, then we start around. Built between 1137 and 1160, this is a Roman Catholic church in the, common, uh, in the current Romanesque and Gothic form, which was largely initiated by Jew Rudolf IV. Boss. Also known as St. Patrick's Cathedral, it is decorated neo Gothic Catholic Cathedral with a height of 157. Hello. Commonly known as St. Bessel's Cathedral, it's an Orthodox church, the building of which began in 1555. In Vienna? An Anglican cathedral built between 1675 oh, and 1710. A medieval Catholic uh, uh, cathedral built between, built from 1894 to Lynn. 1905, built between 930 and 1929, is located within a castle and contains the tombs of many Bohemian kings and holy Roman emperors. Uh, built between 1386 and Oh, the one and I said Vienna is actually Moscow, I think. Built between 1386 and 1965 in Gothic style, its full name is Metropolitan Cathedral Basilica of the Nativity of St. Mary. It counts spires, 135 spires atop its roof. Milan. And that were all the answers. And then the remaining ones, Vienna, yeah, no, stop the time. All right, because this is the second round, you will need six correct answers. Okay, let me fill it. Do a lifeline and 127 seconds left. Okay, I'll use another lifeline. Just to be sure? Yeah. All right. We'll leave you at a bit over 100 seconds and then we can move on to checking. So the first cathedral built in the 12th uh, century, it's a Roman Catholic church, uh, which was initiated by Duke Rudolf IV and it's in Vienna. So that's your first correct answer. Then the St. Patrick's Cathedral, Built in the 19th century, it's in New York. Then with a height of 157 uh, meters, it is the highest cathedral in Europe and the third highest in the world. It was initially built between 1248 and 1560, but was only completed between 1842 and 1880. And it's in uh, Cologne. <laughs> Commonly known as St. Vessel's Cathedral, it is an Orthodox church, the building of which began in the 16th century. It's at Moscow. So very nice of you to correct that one. And an Anglican cathedral built between 1675 and 1710 in Baroque style in London, St. Paul's Cathedral. Then a medieval Catholic cathedral built between 1163 and 1345. It named it means Our Lady. It's the Notre Dame in uh, Paris. Then built in the 19th century by order of Emperor William II in Renaissance and Baroque revival styles. It's a Protestant church and monastic tomb. It's Berlin. So already Stefan, a uh, correct answer. So we're moving on to the last round as well. And then built between 900 and 1929, so quite a long time. It is located within a castle and contains the tombs of many Bohemian kings and Holy Roman emperors, in, indeed in Prague. Oh, wow, I didn't even need it. <laughs> <laughs> and lastly, built between 1386 and 1965 uh, in Gothic style. Phil's name is Metropolitan Cathedral Basilica of the Nativity of St. Mary. And it counts 135 spires atop its roof. And it's in Milan, so all answers were correct. So congratulations, you get another lifeline. The one uh, you've used without purpose, uh, you have back right now. <laughs> Unfortunately, those 60 seconds won't come back. No, too bad. But we will hop into the third round. Uh, there were a lot of options to pick from when deciding to pick what kind of flag to make. Maybe a bunch of colors or some interesting shape. However, it appears that most countries choose to assume uh, the same combination, red, white, and blue. Even the flag of the Netherlands is red, white, and blue. 
only we were the first to do it, so we're not one of those copycats. So okay. here we have nine flags in the colors red, white, and blue. And you have okay. to tell the corresponding country. So the countries that you can choose from are Slovakia. Just yes, it's uh, you will see the flag. All right. And uh, I won't say a thing about it. So it's Slovakia, Cuba, New Zealand, Iceland, Russia, Norway, Thailand, uh, Liberia, and Czech Republic. So did you have uh, one of those maps with all the flags yeah. uh, on it as well? Uh, I don't think this should be a large problem. <laughs> right. So you need seven correct answers. Okay. So uh, you can switch uh, two of them. So uh, good luck. Iceland. Uh, Liberia, New Zealand, Norway, Russia, Cuba, Czech Slovakia, Czech Republic, <laughs> Slovakia, <That's> Slovakia, <laughs> Thailand, stop saying. It's, that was a, a fast round. Are you really confident? Uh... Yeah, I know these. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then we can choose to move on to uh, checking. So here, the first flag, sometimes the flags were a bit hard because there's also a white uh, background for you. <clears throat> so hopefully that uh, wasn't an issue. Uh, the first one you had correct is, is the flag of Iceland. Then this flag is uh, mixed up with the United, <laughs> the flag of the United States all the time on Twitter. It's the flag of Liberia. This flag could be mixed up with the flag of New Zealand. The only thing is, I think, a star in the left bottom corner. You mean Australia, right? Yeah, but this is, uh, uh, yes, Australia, but this is New Zealand. <laughs> then uh, I think this picture was uh, quite small. It's uh, Norway. Then we have Russia. And then Cuba. Then for the seventh one, we have Czech Republic, followed by Slovakia. And then lastly, if you put a mirror on the flag of the Netherlands, then you get the flag of Thailand. Okay. So uh, congratulations, another perfect round. So that means you will have three lifelines and 82 seconds. Now I will ask round. you, do you want to play a fourth round? Yeah, sure. <laughs> All right, then we will do that one as well. Sometimes the questions and the answers are simple. It's a quote by Dr. Zeus. Uh, Zeus. However, in this round, we have a simple question, but perhaps it is the hardest to answer. In this round, nine capitals of states of the United States. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I will name the city, only okay. the city, and then you have to tell me the, the state. That should be fine. So are you familiar with the... Yeah, I know a song actually from the, the Animaniacs, which taught me all the state capitals. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so the states that you can choose from are Florida, New Mexico, Massachusetts, Montana, Kansas, Colorado, California, Utah, and Texas. All right, are you ready? Almost. Uh, yes. All right. So I will only name the city, nothing more. All right. Then we can start. Austin. Texas. Denver. Colorado. Tallahassee. Florida. Helena. Uh, Montana. Boston. Massachusetts. Topeka. Uh, Kansas, Santa Fe, New Mexico, Sacramento, California, Salt Lake City, Utah. Stop the time. I don't need any uh, lifelines. <laughs> <laughs> well, you uh, stop on 54 seconds. Nice. <laughs> you oh. actually can use all your free lifelines because uh, that only costs you 48 seconds. No, I like this number of seconds that I've left. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. 
you must admire the, the confidence that you have. Then uh, we will move on to checking. So the first one was Austin, and this is indeed Texas. Next up is Denver from Colorado. And Tallahassee, among all those huge cities in Florida, this is the capital. And we have not Hannah Montana, but Helena Montana. And we have Boston from Massachusetts. Then Topeka from Kansas. Santa Fe in New Mexico. Sacramento in California. And finally, Salt Lake City in Utah. So uh, fairly well done, Niels. Uh, I knew that. see that I those maps failed. <laughs> <laughs> Not really surprising. All right, so uh, congratulations. You actually beat uh, Thomas. So, uh, oh, I didn't <laughs> expect that. All right, so uh, yeah, congratulations. That means you Thank will you. get two Albacus cookies for free nice. and also the, the apple pie. And now we will also take a look at the uh, the question for the viewers at home. Can uh, Lavinia send me uh, the the winner of that? Because then we can also announce that. Because the question here was, uh, which two Abacus members celebrate their birthday today and were born in the same year? And uh, I'm actually curious whether you know this, Niels. I'm going to put yeah, you on the Yeah, uh, Martin and Mike. They actually told me last Friday. <laughs> ha. <laughs> See, because uh, you are in a committee uh, or were yeah. for the symposium you still are, are. in a committee yeah. but uh, the uh, evaluation already took place and we have one more meeting so indeed uh, the answer was uh, uh, Martijn Ter Steeg and Mike Overmars and then the funny thing is that also another member of the symposium committee has got yeah. the, the surprise, surprise. The question right <laughs> <laughs> and it's uh, Margriet, so congratulations, Margriet. And I think uh, Lavinia, who is also in the committee, maybe has uh, to do something with that as well, uh, about, with thinking of the question. So congratulations, Margriet, you also get a prize. And uh, then uh, this was it for this week. And then tune in next week when we have Jorn participating in the category science. So thank you for playing, Niels. I'm also really excited for next week. Thank All you right. for having me, by the way. No and, problem. Uh, thanks. Uh, <laughs> See you later. Thanks for, thanks for watching, everybody. Bye-bye.